societies like where I live, in the developing world, like in Brazil, in Latin America, some in Africa and in Asia, we have complex social issues related to the lack of opportunity, and we have hunger. I'm here to talk to you how food and cooking skills can really take people out of poverty while promoting the sustainable practices that we're talking here at EAT. When I was 28, food became the guideline of my life. I was lucky enough to take place in the Brazil's first ever culinary program. I had the resources to invest, which wasn't cheap. I learned so much about the cooking techniques, but the life skills that I had from there, such as becoming disciplined, organized, were just becoming part of my life. But what I learned the most by interacting with others in the process of cooking, I became self-independent, confident, but most of that I became to trust more people, to be more cooperative, to be more generous. After 10 years working in the hospitality business as a cook, as a chef, I visited a favela for the first time in slums in Brazil. And I thought I could train and employ those people but what I thought when I got after one year is like food can create such a social cohesion and a healing force for people in troubled situations and communities. So after working all with these people, which I tried to get them empowered just to create like these bridges between social realities, I started to meet all of them. And I met Uridea. Uridea in 2004, she was jobless, she has little skills. She dreamed of having the same rights and opportunities as welfare Brazilians. She came from this marginalized group. Imagine living in a place where 53% of the people had already felt hunger and three quarters of the inhabitants considered it violent. Favelas are social like uh, places that most of the people don't go. It's a place ruled by the drug trafficking, fear and prejudice everywhere. The state is not there. But on the other hand, there is a promising gastronomic market who is in need of talent. Only in my city, Sao Paulo, there are 44,000 food establishments having 800,000 job positions. This represents 20% of the economic active uh, population aged between 20 and 39. What they say, there is not enough trained people. So with this gap in education, my dream of a more equitable society, I started to think, what if I got people like Uridea to get involved with cooking? But what if through cooking they can become what they are meant to be? So with that goal in mind, I started an organization to be the foundation for this social gastronomic movement, which I'm so passionate about. At Gastromotivo, we started offering vocational training for free, for really talented youth who had zero opportunities, not even money for their transportation. Our vocational training focuses not only on the cooking skills, but on citizenship, bringing the awareness of the connection between man and nature, supporting entrepreneurship, leadership, and empowerment. We partner with more than 70 restaurants who financially support part of our program, but what they do, they support us giving employment to all of them. 90% of our trainees are still, tra are still working two years after their graduation. This year alone, we will train a thousand people in four different cities in Brazil. But how we scale? So now we're starting to take our program to prisons in Brazil. It's becoming a public policy in the state of Sao Paulo. We are also working with immigrants coming from Peru and Bolivia who cannot get connected with the society, who need to get jobs. But we go beyond that. Using peer-to-peer -peer education, our trainees become teachers themselves, and they go back to their communities and they have to replicate what they learn. What they are teaching? How to cook, how to have a healthy life, how to use fresh ingredients when in a place that is full of salt and sugar, as we all know. And then they get connected to their families. They become these community leaders. And this is what's happening in Brazil. That's how we replicate, with them going everywhere. So then, how do we make this like more mainstream? We believe cooking is the fastest, the strongest, and the most powerful tool to generate social inclusion. It can be everywhere. It's an endless learning process. 
So are, you are witnessing the rise of a social gastronomic movement. Last year we researched for more than eight organizations around the world in 14 different countries who are using social gastronomy to provide inclusive uh, workforce development. So people from all walks of life now, they have a uh, practical skill, a uh, collaborative way, and a holistic way of society to embrace them. Men re recently released from prison in UK, orphanages in Vietnam. So all these new baristas, wait staff, cooks, that these organizations provide like us from Motiva are now becoming wanting from all the chefs and the market. But how, how do we create this? How do we scale this? How do we make like what I mentioned, gastromotiva, gastronomy social mainstream? We see it going to two directions. The first is actually getting the restaurant owners like we got in Brazil, the chefs, engage and open up their kitchen for, for teaching. We have many chefs from all over the world, top chefs who are now replicating what we do and we share technology. But on the other way, we have to work with the governments. We have to work with the bilateral agencies, agencies such as the World Bank, the Inter-American Development, the World Economic Forum, and then we can get mainstream. I'm sure and I'm positive and I can see witnessing how this movement is growing, growing faster and faster in this last couple of years. So Lidea, she became a mother and entrepreneur. She employs more than 20 people in her community. She found a place of love and pride deep in her heart, in her heart that no difficulties can take away her commitment to live with love and pride. So let me address here, we are talking how can we feed 9 million people healthy with options. Well, from my experience, you need to get the people who are on the ground to find a solution. If you give them a, everyone has the right to think about a life project. If you give them the right tools and you encourage them, they will do it. I have a story like when they went to, to replicate the project. So this lady with this apprentice with all, four of her people in the same class, they found some Syrian women coming from Syria from the war who had, didn't talk, didn't go out in, the, in their city, in Sao Paulo, in their neighborhood, just afraid, they didn't know even the language. So they started to cook together the sweets, and they started to do it in, in Sao Paulo with less ingredients, cheaper ingredients, how to engage with the community and become a source of income. So now our restaurants are buying the halewa, all the sweets from them. So that's the transcendence of this movement. It can be done anywhere, so I need you, your advice on how can we make this mainstream. It goes beyond one meal, one kitchen, or a Michelin star. In the end, we are all seeing here, food is about people. Thank you so much, and thank you to it and everyone.